called external condition, the phenomena um, in the worldly ways because our mind has been conditioned and been brought up and shaped uh, in a way to accept these worldly conventions. So in so doing, they give rise to a lot of afflictions, right? That knows endless desire uh, because we're in the desires realm. And I, but when, when we have a million, we want 10 million, so when we have 10 million, we want 100 million, 100 million, we want 1 billion, and 1 billion is not enough. So it goes on and on and endlessly. So all this uh, karma that we create and afflictions arising from, um, from, the, from there, um, it's uh, all planted in our consciousness or where the store of karmic seeds are. And so when we dig on this life, we have all these bad karmic seeds. So when it drop upon us, um, we call it its sufferings. So and our four suffering of birth, sickness, aging, and death, suffering from parting with those we love because we got attached to the small love that we have. And suffering from meeting those we hate, and this all accumulated in the past that we have created, unable to obtain uh, uh, what we want, and, uh, and then of raging out of fire aggregates so in the skandhas um, and that replicate our afflictions. So this is a causation of suffering and, and, and all this that we accumulate in, uh, in the past life. So what we make sure is that we do not accumulate anymore in this lifetime and purify the past. So it's an um, interesting quote by Master Chen Yen. He said, when we are willing to repay karmic debts, we get 20% off. So I let him have his way. Uh, yeah, I want to up get up with him now. Surely if you have this sort of mindset, you'll get along harmoniously with people because you're accommodating. So when you're accommodating, actually you flow like water. Water can take any shape or form. Water can solidify, it can fluid, it can be a, a vapor. So therefore, in whatever form it is, um, you, you can, it can be harmonious with under any condition in, a, in any shape or form. So therefore, we repay the karmic debts. We learn karmic lessons. At the same time, we discharge our karmic responsibility. So we need to be accommodating, see the bigger picture, and distance our some karmic causes and not be entangled uh, with them. So in do so doing, what we are doing is that when we engage in this practice, um, when we repay the karmic debts, we are actually purifying uh, what we the, the past causes. And, uh, but in so doing, purifying the com, com, uh, past causes and repaying the debt, uh, at the same time, we are giving. Okay, we, 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 and we, when we give, we don't ask for anything. So we create good karmic connection and affinities. And so imagine now, you're actually clearing past faults, gathering more merits, and this leads to cessation of suffering, which is the, um, the uh, the uh, third and the fourth uh, noble truth. So what is these three flawless studies? Uh, precept, samadhi, and wisdom. So precepts, um, so let us go to here. So what, that understand the Dharma, we follow uh, the, the rules of being a good person and walk the correct course through life. So rules of being a good person and walk the correct course through life, this is about um, correcting yourself is about having the right character. It's about changing our character. So whatever unwholesome we have when brought up from the past life, we correct them by following the rules. So you remember the um, picture I showed you all once before, you're on a straight road, but there are a lot of side roads, left and right. Um, we don't get, we follow the rules, we drive straight. So this is following or following the precept. The precepts are just, so basically the precepts are the discipliners. Now, if we can be I mean discipline, that means we are training not to be sidetracked by any distraction or disturbances that come to our life. So that is in itself is a training for you to, really, to practice in stillness, which is samadhi. So whatever confusing uh, everything else that comes to disturb by external condition, you won't be disturbed. So naturally, on the precept, you have to samadhi. When you're in samadhi, then you see the stillness. When, when you are not, the mind is not disturbed. When the mind is, so the same thing, when you do your contemplation, when your mind is still, that's when you gain your realization. Okay, so that realization comes from the sound of silence. 
and that is why you grow in the wisdom. So, the um, so when our minds then we open, our thoughts will be pure. We will not be defiled by ignorance in the world around us. So, as a result of which we are what stoking the fires, attracting the wind of ignorance, and that is what the three flawless studies uh, is about. So, in summary, what are the lessons learned? We create and reduce karma all without being aware of it, and that is um, the ignorance of life. So we cannot just look at the Buddha and the Master Master say, we just pray to the Buddha and expect to be protected by him, and, and we don't wait for the one, um, and that way we've been transformed, it doesn't work that way. So the mind is ours, and it's ours to change. So we need to realize uh, the Buddha mind or the pure nature, uh, so that we can um, penetrate the principles. So in the world today, there's so many disasters which is happening. So there's so much discord in the people and this is the condition and the world that we're in right now. So all these things because the mind is not uh, balanced. But despite all this, um, we have to be in practice amongst these people. And that's the reason why a pure mind will not uh, prevent us from deviating and wisdom leaks. So. Some say I'm doing all good deeds, um, but then quickly attempted by others. And that's when the precepts is not being held um, steadfastly or the samadhi uh, is not still enough. So these habitual tendencies are hard to eliminate. So you got to be very, very mindful and aware of ourselves. So we clear, we learn the three wisdoms, right? The wisdom of uh, listening, uh, contemplating obviously, then um, practicing. And I found no good truth. So engage in this flawless uh, study to escape the burning house. So in contemplation and relating to engage uh, in this flawless study, or I kind of call it a true study, um, the true study is a practice of perfecting oneself in virtues and wisdom. And that's what we are. What we are. I mean, for the change of a character, we grow in virtue and we grow in wisdom, as my master is saying. So it's a practice of realization that we have attained a progress in our self-development. And this self-development is about progress in our mind development towards a higher consciousness. So when we do so in this uh, path, in a Bodhisattva path, we do so by serving others with the inner knowledge, not only that you help those whom you serve to know and even understand the purpose of life, you'll grow in profundity or in a knowing that will evolve into intuitive knowing from inner knowing to intuitive knowing, that's going to be a very long, long uh, talk. Okay, but just contemplate on that. So, in relationship, also related to this, a true teaching teaches you to at least engage in the four great practices, and this, and this is what we should be doing because we have these four great practices, and this encapsulate the infinite minds and the four noble truth. It's number one: very simply, never to hurt in any way in a body, speech, or mind. Number two, ever to help. Number three, ever to care. And number four, always to serve. And with the fog, you have got to repeat practices, you'll be in harmony with anybody that you meet. Okay, with that note, thank you, Kanan brothers and sisters, that's all I have. Yeah, Kanan, Kanan so much, uh, Brother Chin. Yeah, yeah okay, let us uh, take a quick group photo before Brother Chin and uh, Sister Supin and Sister Kaping leave us. <laughs> Same time, I'm going to wish everybody happy Mooncake Festival in advance. Tomorrow is Pat Yit Sap Mi. Uh, everybody oh, is that start. right? Tomorrow? Huh? Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Pai Sap Mi. Tomorrow Pai Sap Mi. Okay. Yeah. So, Father should be giving up Mooncakes. Huh? <laughs> Father. <laughs> I thought the son, should, son and children should buy oh, for the father. Oh, that's true. That's But but in fact, that was exactly what my father complained to me. You know, I never buy mooncake for him. Every day, uh, you every every year you buy mooncake for me. You know, because he enjoy mm. going, you go and search for all these mooncakes. Uh, yeah, every year he will buy mooncake for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I've got to go now. Okay, kinda, kinda, yeah, okay. so much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let us continue by having maybe Sister YY to share. Sister YY. Uh, good morning, uh, Brother Robert, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, today is a great session. Hearing uh, these three plus four plus three, uh, uh, the three wisdom, four noble truth, and uh, these three floral studies together. 
this is indeed I think the most the very powerful our powerful uh, spiritual tools when I think combine combine together the the impact will be very great and master mentioned this this is actually uh, not only you know can preserve preserve uh, but grow our wisdom life so here again I'm happy to hear about the mirror analogy today master mentioned the da yuan jing zi the great perfect uh, mirror wisdom yeah what we need to do we know the nature of the mirror this is something that we uh, uh, so called expired to be let the mind be like the mirror our duty is to wipe the dust constantly every day to, to let it remain actually very reflective so here the other uh, a uh, message a uh, master mentioned about the mirror is actually free to let go free to let go yeah indeed all the whatever images when it actually uh, move away the mirror will still be clear so the other the other message I, I get here today is letting go yeah free to let go so the problem of all the suffering one of the great cause is attachment so here uh, the few few uh, points uh, I managed to pick up uh, relating to this uh, uh, letting go uh, is this very very meaningful insightful saying. One pan, yeah. Whatever wealth possession, it cannot be brought along. And uh, this this Chinese saying, yeah. Uh, Today also, uh, Master did mention. So all this is is actually so very very uh, insightful. And then in our daily, in, in actually in the course of our life, whoever that we encounter in the path, you know, of our life, uh, I must have mentioned there's definitely some karmic connection in the past. So what we need to do is to actually work hard to uh, uh, to actually make good karmic connection. So this is actually a way of uh, our daily practice. Daily we encounter so many people. So here the aspiration and the reminder is actually to to uh, turn all this uh, so-called uh, connection you know to how the yuan uh, the few words i i pick up is uh must have mentioned uh, get along harmoniously before giving accommodate accommodating that's why whenever accounting any uh, encounter any situation let's say we step step uh, back a step back what toya boa tender is very spacious like the sky and ocean okay and uh, here uh uh, the other point is, uh, Master mentioned about the three wisdom, uh, listening, contemplating, and uh, practicing. It's not just mindfully listening, uh, practicing, but we, we, the point highlighted is that we have to realize uh, to the Buddha's mind and penetrate the Buddha's principle. Wow, that's so much to learn and contemplate. Yeah, that's my uh, sharing today, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Thank you so much, uh, Stowaway. All this uh, uh, very insightful sharing uh, from you. Uh, thank you, Kevin, so much. Uh. Okay, next, uh, can we have uh, Sister Riani to share a bit? Good morning, Sister Riani. Sister Riani, are you able to share? Uh, sorry, sorry. No problem. Just now, oh. was in late. <laughs> oh. um, Ah uh, yeah, the, like, today master sharing uh, is quite same la, like uh, what 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 I shared yesterday because uh, actually these things that I keep share with my uh, uh, daughter because my daughter keeps saying you are doing a good this you are so good this and that but like master today said uh, while you are doing good deeds uh, you also sometimes you do the bad things because of our habitual tendency like me. I know my habitual tendency is uh, my temper, then also my speech karma. Um, towards others, I'm okay. But 
family, you know, uh, this mouse, uh, sometimes uh, I like to utter the not a good, <laughs> good words to hear. Lah. So, because I know I, I take my family for granted. My family is uh, love me. Like yesterday, my daughter told me, because every night before they sleep, they like to go to my bed. Then we will have a chit chat. Then my eldest daughter told me, Mommy, you know what? Whenever, even though um, you are angry with us, you smack us, you whack us, but at the end of the day, every night, definitely we will come to your room. We will hug you and say, we love you. Because we know that um, mommy is not um, uh, have that intention to hurt us, but because of we also trigger you, we also uh, not listening. That's why you lose your temper. That's why like, I said, I, I, I told myself, like, because of these things, uh, so I know why, whatever what I did to my daughter, definitely they will forgive me. That's why I keep repeating, repeating my mistakes. Uh. So I cannot do like that uh, because this, this thing is not good. Then I, I will try my very best to slowly eliminate my this bad temper. <laughs> okay, can I? Yeah, can I, can I so much, uh, Sister Riani. Uh, maybe, uh, this Sister Riani, you are following the, the olden teaching uh, in Chinese because it uh, well, da si ai, ma si ten, you know, so the more you beat, the more you score, probably you, are, you love your children more. Uh, but anyway, of course, it's not, not, not right. Lah, you know. Anyway, uh, sometimes I think, I think sometimes I think not only story, I think in fact, even myself also, I think sometimes we also uh, abuse our, our closeness with our, our family members. So I think that, uh, to, to, hear from Steriani and also a good reminder from Steriani to all of us here. Yeah. Once we just take our our family members uh, a little bit for granted. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much Steriani for your sharing. Next can we have Sister Effie to share? Sister Effie, good morning. Good morning, brother Robert. Good morning. Uh, brother and sisters. Uh, my gist today is about the um, the uh, pure Purification of the mind coming from the uh, three forest studies, meaning that uh, uh, when we listen to the Dharma, we have to uh, listen earnestly and then contemplate the teachings. How to contemplate the teaching is by uh, going into experiential. That means uh, we go and practice it to feel and uh, and uh, in doing so we will awaken our consciousness and then uh, also uh, in the process of it uh, when we benefited from the dharma we must not forget to also uh, guide others who have karmic connections with us and not let them uh, uh, alone because uh, a, a person alone uh, we can't do much. We need the strength of many, many, many people. And uh, this is what uh, we need, the purification of the mind. If uh, more people's minds are purified, then uh, society will be in harmony. And uh, how to reach out uh, to the purification of the mind? Master was saying that uh, the burning house, we need to not only save ourselves, uh, no, sorry, we need to First of all, uh, reach out to save others first. Then uh, our actions uh, may uh, gradually uh, influence more and more people to reach out to others. So then when we are in trouble, other people will also help us. So the society will be in a more uh, harmonious uh, uh, environment. Um, like just the master was saying that the great perfect mirror, that uh, in doing so, we must stay uh, afloat, uh, must stay afloat in uh, our resolve, not not 
not wavered by external conditions. Like uh, sometimes our friends will call us out for clubbing, for drink, uh, for you know, for some chit chat outside. So if there is at the same time there is some uh, such as uh, activity, so we need to contemplate or uh, or which one to uh, to give priority, and also uh, give, in giving so must not hurt the others. Uh, this is the uh, well. Uh, this will nurture our wisdom in uh, handling any situation related to uh, people, matters, and issues. Uh, the most important is to nurture our wisdom life uh, through cultivation. As at the end, Master was saying that uh, we need the precepts uh, to self-discipline ourselves. Then only uh, we uh, put in diligence, uh, our effort uh, in uh, involving ourselves with more and. Uh, I think involving in activities in Suchi, the uh, most important is in charity. La. In charity, it can be in with our time, our money, or our small little efforts, our kind words, or what. Uh, it goes a long way to uh, nurture our uh, wisdom life. Ka'an, this is my sharing. Ka'an. Yeah, and it's just uh, happy for you. Wonderful sharing. Yeah. Next, can we have uh, Sister Chui Moon to share a bit? Morning, Sister uh, Good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, The word that, that I get uh, that, uh, you know, give me the most uh, impact today, actually, is forgiving. Learning how to forgive. You know, because, uh, you know, I think a lot of times I see around me, a lot of problems is, uh, as Master say, you know, understanding why we, we dislike certain person, sometimes for no reason. I know of a, of a, person, of a, a friend or a manager who, who, you know, this uh, supplier, he comes to see him and for no reason, he just dislikes him intensely, intensely. He doesn't like to see his face at all, you know, but he doesn't understand why. So I think... Uh, you know, this Dharma really helps us because it helps us to understand why we have such intense feelings sometimes towards somebody who for no reason we dislike. I mean, if we know somebody has done something bad to us and we dislike them, we understand why we dislike them. But there are cases where you have just met the person. You have no understanding why you have this intense feeling of dislike, not wanting to see the person. Uh, but with Dharma, I feel that, uh, you know, we are able to then uh, accept that, yes, it must be some, some, some problems over previous lives and it's not a fault of his in this life, it's not a fault of ours in this life. So <clears throat> to overcome that feeling is the ability to say whatever it is that maybe I've done to him or he has done to me, I forgive. If I forgive him, then I use another frame of mind to look at the person. And uh, usually uh, uh, the feeling will go away. Uh, in the case of those people who have done you wrong, you know why you resent them. Again, I find that if we have the ability to practice with a forgiving heart, really the, 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 the harmonious uh, condition can be reinstalled or reinstated. Uh, especially in 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 uh, in the uh, office environment, home is a little bit more different because most mostly home is more and more loving than than uh, dif difficult situations. But I see this a lot in office, and most of us are working. We spend eight hours of our life in the office. It's actually a major part of our lives. So it is really necessary to be harmonious with everybody. And we can only be harmonious if everybody is taught to have a forgiving mind because we are all not perfect. So, you know, uh, yeah. So I, I, I constantly counsel my staff and hope that, uh, you know, I can have the possibility to open their minds up and the heart to be more forgiving so that the conditions are more forgiving and and in the end they suffer less we all suffer less when we have a forgiving mind yeah so um i i uh 
I also think that, uh, you know, when I listen to Sister Carping, that sometimes we must, it's not just forgiving others because we, we should also learn how to forgive ourselves because as you say, nobody is perfect. So sometimes we make mistakes and be very hard on ourselves. Why? Why am I not able to do that? I must try harder or you do something very wrong and you don't forgive. So it's not good also to be unable to forgive yourself. So I think it's also important to learn to forgive ourselves as well. Kanan? Yeah, Kanan. So much, uh, Sister Truman. Wonderful, wonderful sharing. Yeah. Okay, next, uh, can we have uh, Sister Irene to share a bit? Sister Irene, morning. Good morning, uh, Brother Robert and Brother and Sister. Wow, all very good sharing. Uh, this morning, I'm also very sleepy, so I didn't copy down notes, but I know I must go through again. Um, yeah, I also like what Sister Truman say. Um, Forgiving others and forgiving self. When we can't do certain things, we have to uh, learn to be that way so that uh, it's more harmonious on everything. Uh, yeah, I think I didn't jot down notes. So <laughs> that's all for this morning. It's okay. Karen, thank you so much. Sorry. Yeah. It's wonderful to hear your voice. Yeah, I think going back to 